Hey guys, so a lot of you may know that I was at camp last week and I had an absolutely amazing time. So this video is basically just saying the stuff that happened. And some of you would have seen the video that I put up yesterday on Facebook. I think it was yesterday. Whatever. I put a video up on Facebook but I didn't want to put it on YouTube because it contained footage of the kids and everything and I'm pretty sure that wouldn't be cool with a lot of parents. So that exists and I did do a video but I just didn't want to put it up on this channel so sorry. But anyway, this is the list of stuff which has happened during the week which I found really funny or just interesting to share with the internet because hey, camp stuff is always fun and I'm sure a lot of you guys go to camp as well or have been to camp because for some reason every one of this generation seems to have been to at least one camp. See the first one on the list is that when we were driving up there because it's about a two two and a half hour journey from Bristol to Loughborough a little small brother of mine a half brother whatever small thing tiny human um, he was also riding up with us, so it was like getting a lift from dad and stepmom. Anyway, so I got bored about halfway into the journey and I wondered how much I could make the small child believe while we are on the journey. And I mean, it's pretty common for me to mislead the small child anyway. And I don't mean this in like a mean way, just huh, I wonder what the kid will believe. So every time we hit a pothole in the road and when we got into country rounds and stuff, it was pretty potholy. Is that a word? Potholy? Potholy. And every time we hit a bump, the small child would complain, What was that? And every time I would reply in complete blank monotone, Oh yeah, we hit another goat. And of course the first couple of times I don't think he really believed me, but after like the fourth or fifth time, like this happened a lot on the journey, he would start looking around trying to find the dead goat that we had just passed. And of course, small child is small. So it would try to look over and obviously couldn't see it. And I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, there it goes. Uh-huh. Well, we just passed it. And I swear by the end of the trip, he actually believed that every time we hit something, there was a goat on the road. I'm a terrible sister, but it's okay. Oh yeah, I also tried to make him believe that every time the snat nav went bing or whatever it was doing, because I don't know how the thing works, but it made noises every now and again. And I tried to make him believe that every time it went off, there was aliens nearby, and he also had to look for those. So yeah, I amused myself on the car journey. <laughs> so when preparing to be a counsellor for a camp, you would expect there to be some more laid back children and some more highly strung children. And that's okay, everyone would expect that, you're prepared for that kind of situation. And of course, we got one that was afraid of the dark. And I don't mean just like a little afraid of the dark, they would not sleep in the room if the light was off. But of course all the other kids wanted the light to be off. And our solution to this was basically to shine a torch in their face for the entire night. I'm not even kidding, we just like wedged it underneath one of the duvets so that it was shining directly into her eyes and she would just face the torch for the entire night. I have no idea how that worked, but hey, it made her fall asleep. Like seriously, that sounds like interrogation procedure. Why would you want the light shining in your face directly all night? Strange children, strange. So for those of you that have been to camp, you know that playing Manhunt is one of the greatest things that you ever get to do there. And it is personally one of my favourites. Growing up, that was always the game that I would look forward to in the week. But something which I realised that the Loughborough camp does, which I have never seen the Bristol camp do, maybe they do, I was just not paying attention, but staff versus camper games are a big thing. And they're a pretty big deal because all of the campers are just straight on to get you and it's kind of terrifying to be perfectly honest. And I was super pumped for this game, like really looking forward to it. Like I say, this is one of my favorite games, so of course I'm gonna get really into it. And I decided that my idea would be to climb to the top of the tree, well, the top of a tree, I guess, there's lots of trees, but find a tree and climb right to the top. And hopefully they won't see me. Just like in Sherwood Forest in Robin Hood literature. But as I climbed to the top of the tree, I heard the whistle go and I was in place, so I was all set. Even if the kids did try to climb up to me, I figured they're probably gonna break their necks if they try to get up here, so they won't do that. Probably. And no, none of them did, none of them wounded themselves, none of them even saw me. They all ran completely past me, underneath the tree, just circling the bottom of it. And my gosh, it was the best feeling in the world, just watching them all run around, so confused. And I was just snapping little twigs at the top, just breaking them off one by one. And they could hear that I was doing something, but none of them looked up. None of them. Like, I was literally just cracking them off and throwing the twigs at them, and none of them realised. It was great. About two minutes in, I hear this giant ruckus going on somewhere else, and people were screaming, trying to chase someone. No idea who had come out there, but someone was being chased, so all the kids were going over there to try and catch that one staff member. And I was like, aha, this 
This is my moment. I am so smart, so sly, I'm gonna jump out of this tree and run straight to the finish. I mean, it was around a couple of corners, but still, I was like, yeah, they're all distracted, they'll be fine. But of course, I am not smooth or slick or graceful in any way, and I literally fell about four feet out of this tree onto the floor on my face because I am so smooth like that, yeah. I suck. And if that wasn't bad enough that I had just lost all of my pride in one fell swoop, or one fell fall, I guess, a kid just comes running out straight after me, and obviously they had seen me fall on my face and immediately grabbed my tag. Luckily, as a staff member, we had two tags each, and I don't think they saw my second one at that point. Like, they <laughs> immediately ran down, grabbed the tag, and they're like, yes, I have the thing, wait, are you okay? You look dead. And I'm like, thanks. Thanks, kid. Yeah. I mean, you keep that. You deserve that, because that was my own stupidity. Like, seriously. My bad. That's okay. But then a second kid was coming along, and I'm like, hmm, no, you didn't see me fall. You do not deserve the second tag. I am not going to let you have this. And I literally belted across. Like, I think I hit about three kids out the way. Not painfully, and they didn't land on anything, so it's all good. They're fine. I didn't hurt anyone. Probably. <laughs> and I got about halfway back and of course I was caught. It was honestly the best thing because none of the kids think that I'm particularly athletic. In fact, I will never say to someone that, yeah, yeah, I can do that stuff because I don't like people to think that I'm athletic. I don't like people to know that I can run or know that I can climb or know that I can play football because then they make me do it and I'm lazy. So on one of the days we had a quiet time, which was basically like an hour of go take a nap, you're too tired to function. And most of the kids in our room, being that we had the youngest group, about half of them slept and half of them just talked quietly amongst themselves. And great, we had like the easiest room. I expected them to be super hyper and like jumping on walls and stuff, but nah, I guess not. And of course near the end of quiet time, they'd all sort of woken up and they're all like getting ready to run around and stuff. And they were still supposed to be quiet for a little bit longer. So it was like 15, 10, 15 minutes that we had left. And I figured, you know, I'm gonna tell these kids a story because they're seven and eight year olds, they love stories. So I sat them all down and they kind of sat down by their own choice. They, they were gonna start telling ghost stories to each other. So I was like, hmm, you know who knows a lot of creepy pastas that she can tell to some kids that will freak them out? That's right, I do. So I sat them all down and told them the story of Oh, uh, comes, I don't remember. It was one of the creepy passes that I know, and it's one of my favourite ones as well. Not particularly terrifying, I cut out like the really gruesome bits, but it was enough to make them on edge, shall we say. Now, the way the campsite lets people know that an activity is ending and that something is about to begin and you should be moving to that place is these bells. Now, we had one of these bells in our room. I don't know if every room had one in the room, but we did. And it was the most beautiful thing like, I think this probably made my week more than anything else. The story had just gotten to, like, the most tense part of it, like, the most climactic part, and the bell rings so loud, and the kids jump at it at the best of times. But this was so beautiful. Just every single one of them jumps up, runs in different direction of the room. I don't even know where they were trying to go. I don't think they knew where they were trying to go. Just jumps and runs everywhere around the room, just trying to get away from whatever the monster thing could be. So brilliant. I've never seen kids that terrified in my entire life, and it was so good. But that's all for this video, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!